you can tell a lot about a person just by asking who their favorite vice admiral is. For example, if it's Virgo, then they're a messy eater. If it's Commel, then yeah, they appreciate good coffee. And if it's Dalmatian, then they're probably a dog person or a furry or both. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and my favorite vice admiral is Smoker because he does what he is. Wait, what? Or is it he does what? He is what he does. Let's move on. But today we're here to discuss quite possibly one of the most neglected aspects of One Piece, which are our incredible set of vice admirals. Just like a biological parent to a straw hat child, Oda has really left these guys to fend for themselves, which is really wild because they are some of the most powerful and influential figures in this entire world. So you know what? We are going to take it upon ourselves to adopt these narrative orphans and give them the time and attention that they deserve. However, in order to make this video YouTube algorithm friendly, we're also going to be pitting these orphans against each other in the very first official Grand Line Review Vice Admiral tier list. So not only are we going to learn about these crazy, creepy, and sometimes even curvaceous characters, but we will also be discovering who is the best of the second best. Because the term vice, by very definition, implies that there is always something greater. And to begin, we have a quick round of Vice Admiral or Nice Admiral, a very simple minigame, the rules of which are as follows. You are a young Marine who has just been assigned a new commander. But before you reach your post, your job is going to be to guess whether your new leader is a mean old vice admiral or an inspiring, wonderful, nice admiral. Should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then you will receive an immediate promotion to the rank of first class seaman. So which will it be, mean vice admiral or less than mean nice admiral? Make your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, oh no, it's only Gumo, which is, well, he's certainly less than nice. I mean, remember when he shot that one guy for having the audacity to say, sir, maybe we shouldn't massacre 1,000 of our own Marines. So yeah, good luck with that. But at the very least, if you guess nice, Admiral, then you know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. All right, here we have what you can see is a One Piece related hat. And inside of this hat are names, 23 names to be precise, of all of the 23 currently known Vice Admirals. Because for the sake of extra hijinks, we are going to be picking them at random. We are going to start with, ah, Strawberry. And as you can see, I didn't even write his name. I just very poorly drew a strawberry. He's very much one of our classic Vice Admirals, having made his first appearance as part of the Bust Call Order on any Slobby. He also made an appearance in Fisher Tiger's flashback as the leader of a squad that would be responsible for inflicting the fatal wounds upon Tiger. That aside, Strawberry is far better known for being the guy with the long, thick, and dare I say, erect head, which has been confirmed by Oda to be an actual head, not just hair. And apparently as a result, Strawberry also possesses a very powerful headbutt, sort of akin to a Don Chinjao style attack. As for where to place him, Strawberry is definitely one of the first characters as I think of when the term Vice Admiral comes up. So you know what? He's gonna get a solid A for effort. S is a bit too high and B is, well, that's the letter B, so A it is. All right, diving deep into the hat of mystery. Next up we have... Suru, one of only two female vice admirals, I believe, and the only one that has the ability to turn enemies into freshly prepared laundry. Suru is someone that I have always wanted to know more about because she serves as the completion of the Garp, Sengoku, and Suru trio, meaning that she must have had quite an action-packed and fascinating past. Plus, there's also the really fun relationship with Doflamingo. He even calls her Suru-san with a level of respect, and she's one of the only characters who has ever issued Dolphy a verbal beatdown on two separate occasions. So I really don't think I can give Suru anything less than an A, and you know what? We're even gonna bump Strawberry down to a B because Suru is on a very different level. Who shall be next? It is, ooh, Maynard. I mean, ugh, Maynard. In case you don't remember, Maynard is by far the most naked device admiral we've ever met. And his big claim to fame was dispatching Gambia at the Corridor Coliseum before being utterly wrecked by Bartolomeo in the exact same chapter. So Maynard is gonna take a big old D straight down to the bottom because he's one of the reasons why vice admirals are so consistently ignored and underrated. Because Bartolomeo, yes, he's cool and all, but if you're literally one rank below admiral, then you probably shouldn't be getting dispatched by uh, Bartolomeo. Into the the hat we go and it's going to be 
a Dalmatian. So here we have our Papa Vice Admiral and he's traditionally been a bit confusing because often people aren't quite sure if he's a fruit user or if he just dresses like a dog or even if he's part mink. And I don't actually know the answer to this. It's speculated but not confirmed that he is a Zoan user, but uh, that's, that's all I got. If he is though, that would be extraordinarily impressive because he appears to be able to transform very select parts of his body, which is something that we really have not seen outside of characters like Chopper and Marco. So he is certainly quite the question mark and I think he sits pretty comfortably around the B tier with a good old strawberry. And uh, <laughs> uh, how appropriate, it's, it's Doberman. So another dog, but like just the name of a dog. <laughs> Doberman is the kind of guy you'd expect to be quite a tough sort of hard ass. And even though he is apparently a follower of absolute justice, he definitely has a softer side than say Sakazuki or Onigumo because he doesn't willingly throw away the lives of his subordinates and he even takes the time to explain things to them, which is, you know, sort of like what Alita would do. It's actually because of Doberman that we know about Rob Lucci's past, for example, and I will never forget that brief shot of him crying in film Z, even though it's not canon. So look, as one of our OG Buster Call Vice Admirals and general intriguing presences, yeah, we're just gonna stick you in B as well. Bastille. Bastille, rather sadly, is essentially only known for his feat of defeat. Although this time it was against Sabo, so I think that's more reasonable of a loss for a Vice Admiral to take. I do like that he wears a mask though, and what I like even more is that if you look at a picture of him as a rookie Marine, his mask is basically the same, except it has less holes and his horns are smaller, which is just adorable. And you just know that at some stage during his career, Bastille probably got self-conscious about his, uh, his, you know, his horn size and decided to amp it up. With that said, Bastille is going to be our first C tier Admiral. He has a cool design, a little bit disappointing of a character, but like not as disappointing as Maynard. So that's very difficult to equal. Next up, we shall have Vice Admiral Draw. Great. Draw. Um, automatic D tier. Draw is a technically canon Vice Admiral who was the antagonist of one of the Ace novels who decided to use flamethrowers to fight against Ace. Which, while I suppose literally fighting with fire was a horrible choice, and we don't even have a picture of him, so just uh, go away. Go, go down to the D. Whoa. Virgo, here we go. This may be controversial, but I'm going to award Virgo with our very first S tier ranking. I legitimately think he was one of the most captivating Vice Admirals because he had a bit of everything. He was sufficiently powerful enough to be considered a threat. He had a great story to be told with his secret agent business. And he even had a cool comical quirk with all of the crap getting stuck to his face. All of that sort of stuff is exactly what I want from a Vice Admiral. Someone who has actual importance in the story, not just a character who happens to be there at the time. And even though he was a filthy Traitor, look, Virgo, I still love you. <laughs> uh, Kommel, I love Kommel. So anime fans probably won't be as familiar with Kommel as manga readers maybe, because he served as a, a sort of antagonist for the Ace cover story, like very sort of. Essentially, Kommel was having problems conducting meetings because the coffee at his marine base was far too bitter, but then Ace gave him a note from Moda, the milk girl, who provided him with some top quality milk, thus preventing further coffee related catastrophes. And Kommel has made appearances in the anime as well, but I don't think he's ever been named and they're all like small cameo background shot sort of stuff. I quite like Kommel though. He's a pretty funny guy if you read the Ace cover story. So we're gonna go with B. <laughs> Make sure that you can see the front of the hat. And it will be Mozambia. Who, um, <laughs> who was Mozambia? I don't remember. Okay, this guy. He's actually one of the earlier Vice Admirals introduced in the series because he was present at the Seven Warlords meeting during the Gyre Arc, and Dolphamingo actually used his string prowess to control him into strangling another Vice Admiral. But you know what? Just like his plain brown suit, Mozambia is a bit bland and disappointing. So he's going straight to D tier. Momonga. So despite my introduction about Smoker, Momonga is probably my personal favorite Vice Admiral, mostly because he's the one who's done the most stuff, the most good stuff. I don't consider what Smoker has done particularly good. But what I mean is he was part of the bust call on any slobby. He's the one who was sent to retrieve Boa Hancock. And during the Paramount War, he actually sliced up Luffy and even had quite an extended role in the film Zed filler arc stuff. And that's because Momonga is just such a fun character to use. A serious stern Marine with a cool design, a dangerously pointy mustache and glorious lavender strap. The worst thing I can say about Momonga is that he's barely appeared in the story post time skip. But then again, you can also say that about the large majority of background Marines because we haven't had an arc or saga that heavily involves them yet. So Momonga is going to be granted an A, which is entirely based on my own personal bias towards him. <laughs> it is Lacroix. 
if I recall correctly, is the giant vice admiral that is not John Giant. Lacroix is a big boy, and that pretty much sums up his character traits. I honestly cannot remember a single thing he's done, if anything. I think that he was eating with Garp and everyone else when they were talking about the rocks pirates during the reverie, but that is, is the eating? We're not giving out points for eating, or else Garp would win. Unless it's a donut eating contest, because fascinatingly enough, Garp once ate 842 donuts, attempting to beat the world record, but it is implied that he was unsuccessful. Back to, back to the, uh, the who are we talking about? Lacroix, that's right, Lacroix. I'd be interested to know how old he is though, and in particular, if he was an El Baffian giant who was sold to the world government by Mother Carmel. But look, I think we'll be putting Lacroix in C tier, because even if we dumped him in D, he would be tall enough to infiltrate C anyway, so. Ronce. Oh no, actually I was wrong. There is another giant who is not John Giant. It's Ronce. However, Ronce's defining characteristic is that he often gets confused with Bastille because both of them wear masks. And similarly to Bastille, they've both had their masks destroyed. Although Ronce had a much more understandable defeat given that he attempted to attack Whitebeard, which resulted in the most predictable of results. Still, the dude willingly took on Whitebeard, so that immediately elevates Ronce to at least a B tier. Maybe, I don't know. I feel like this is an arbitrary decision, but I'm going to stick with it. Momo Usagi and Shatan, excellent. So I've paired these two together because they are, they're basically a double act. So fun fact, these two vice admirals are fan created. In two separate SBS segments, one reader asked when Momo Usagi, an epithet meaning pink rabbit, would make an appearance in the series. And in the very next SBS, another fan created Shatan, which means brown pig, a man who apparently asked Momo Usagi out on a date 100 times and was rejected 100 times. But Oda enjoyed this so much that he brought these characters to life and inserted them into the canon of One Piece as Vice Admirals. And honestly, the fact that they're fan made is all the reason I need to throw them into A tier because it shows that we have had an impact on One Piece. And just, I love these two in general. Whenever they appear, which is very rare, I am very excited. Smoker, ah, oh, finally, I was wondering where you were, which I imagine is exactly what Tashiki said right after Alabaster. I mean, he's going to rank highly, but the question is how high? Smoker is definitely a bit of a meme due to his incredible losing streak in the series, but at the very least, he does lose to a lot of respectable opponents like flamingos, heart stealers, gassy men, and even fellow vice admirals. Is Smoker really S tier though? I, I honestly don't know. He actually doesn't give me as much to work with as Virgo, so I think we're going with Day. Smoker just needs to be a bit funnier and like, just better, be better in general. Maybe add a third cigar or a fourth, maybe even a fifth, or just stuff his mouth until he looks like that one panel of Superman smoking. I think that would do it. John Giant, great. I've mentioned him plenty of times already, but I think he's a fairly easy A. So John is a man of firsts. Not only is he the first giant to be introduced in One Piece, but he's also the first giant to enlist in the Marines. And by enlist, I mean be sold into servitude by Mother Karma. However, he was the second giant to be put down by Whitebeard during the Paramount War. Ron, sneaky, sneaky Ron, got in just before that. But his actions did not prevent John Giant from making the exact same mistake with the exact same result. And once again, definite points for being willing to attack the most powerful man in the world without a second thought. But John, I need to know more about you. So you're going to end up in B tier is uh, Yamakaji, all right, Yamakaji. What even is there to say about Yamakaji? All he does is smoke and smile. <laughs> that's that's all there is to him. See, he's going straight into C. Uh, it is cancer, but what, 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 While we are here, we're gonna do another one. Here we go, it is stainless. So I'm doubling these two up because at this point, I don't really wanna say the exact same thing twice. They were basically both present at the Warlord meeting with Mozambia, the other one. Stainless got non-consensually choked out and cancer just stood there and watched like the voyeur he is. That is their entire involvement in the series and they're both going to be slapped with a mighty D tier ranking. Onigumo, excellent. The, uh, the One Piece world's answer to Spider-Man. If Spider-Man wore a Roman helmet and uh, kind of sucked. He's such an evil mofo. Onigumo is basically Sakazuki Light, a devout follower of absolute justice. And as such, he's actually one of the more interesting vice admirals because he does command a certain degree of fear. And unlike Dalmatian, Onigumo is pretty much 100% a devil fruit user, although that fruit has yet to be named. It appears to give him access to spider-like appendages, and look, what he definitely has going in his favor is memorability. Onigumo does not fade into the vast pit of Vice Admirals, and I'm actually interested to see where he goes in the future, so Onigumo, you are an easy A. All right, it is Garp. Oh, finally, man, this old man sure did take his time. They've also attempted to draw what is like a little 
fist there, but uh, don't think it really looks like a fist. But Garp is the undisputed legend. There is no Marine who has had more impact on this world than Garp. And honestly, it's a bit unfair to everyone else that Garp ends up on this tier list at all. He's only here because he's actively refused the chance to become an Admiral and potentially even more. So with that in mind, I think it's only fair that we create a new last minute Garp tier because he is that incomparable to everyone else. All right, we have one left and it is... Nazu Ketagari, someone who most of you have probably never heard of. So a nice climactic ending. This is great. Like, Garp, you couldn't have waited till the last one, man. <sighs> but he's actually quite important because it's this guy's job to assign epithets. So that means he is the one who chose the names Akino, Aokiji, Kizaru, and so on and so forth. Apparently, he also has a hobby of fortune telling based on people's names. And his name itself, Nazu Ketagari, actually means wanting to name someone in Japanese. So he's fun, but uh, fun aside, I'm going to say C. He's definitely not as bad as the D tier, but he's definitely not as B as the B tier. But there we have it. I'm kind of shocked at my own choices here, particularly Virgo. I had no idea I appreciated him as much as I apparently do, but I think this is uh, it's pretty solid. But if you'd like to see more One Piece glory, then do check out this video where we talk about one of the worst aspects of the series, which is how Oda handles death. It's quite an in-depth video and very fun, so I look forward to seeing you there.